thank you very much goriya sir and uh, i will thank and uh, uh, heartily gratitude to the institution those have invited me to talk with the uh, participants actually before raising the issues i would like to say that what is the uh, place or position of forensic science in the criminal justice system uh, i may say that uh, criminal justice comprises of so many components and elements uh, as you have already heard in any speech because i have not attended the whole uh, seminar so i can say that two basic or important elements or components are there i can group them in formal component and informal components in formal components i can include the legislative law enforcement adjudication and correction originally in the criminal justice system there used to be only three components and legis legislative was not included in that but in my opinion legislative is also important because they are enacting the laws they are preparing the laws and police is enforcing the laws and courts are adjudicating the judgments and jails are uh, performing their correction duties in my opinion in formal elements or the pillars of criminal justice system may be the prosecution the defense attorney forensic scientists and even the community also because without community no organization can perform the duties well so in my opinion community is also one of the elements of the criminal justice system i am not going in detail uh, about the duties and functions of these things but i can firmly say that the total criminal justice system is based on police investigation and police is the gateway of the criminal justice system if police will not be active the criminal justice cannot step upward or forward or in any way they cannot step up so police is the gateway of the criminal justice system and criminal justice system starts from every type of duty of the police though it may be maintenance of the law and order though it may be the uh, you can say uh, investigation of the crime etc etc so in every sphere police is the uh, you can say main hero in the field of investigation in the case of investigation of the cases anyhow nowadays because of the technical development because of the you can say uh, great development in every sphere police has to take the need of forensic scientists and police cannot work even a single step without the help of the forensic scientists because for example we can say the scene of crime at scene of crime i have personally visualized and observed that the police officers are not so expert to handle the scene of crime there or to pick up the uh, exhibits or to uh, packet the exhibits or to seal or even to ask the questions what type of questions they are supposed to ask from the uh, scientists uh, in the cfsl or fsl so in this field the police will need the help of uh, the uh, forensic scientists we generally uh, find that police has to first of all decide whether crime has been occurred or not so 
to decide this one whether for example this is the arson case it is a arson case and in arson case it has to be decided it we have to find in the investigation whether the arson case is uh, you you can say uh, uh, due to the nonsense or due to the miscreants of the other persons or it is self created by the person so this can be decided only by the forensic scientist not by the police officer how if the police find i am remembering one case of sadar bazar when i was acp in 1981 in sadar bazar area i found that one arson case has occurred in a shop and it was found that it is due to short circuit or some uh, the 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 miscreant person has done this act but when the forensic scientists uh, searched and found that some foul smell is coming from there and that was that smell was of kerosene oil smell so it was ultimately this case a came into conclusion that the fire or arson case was created by the shop keepers to get the insurance of the shop insurance of the shop so to to decide whether crime has been occurred or not or otherwise it, it, it can be solved easily with the help of the forensic uh, scientist number 2 at the scene of crime i know very well that the police officers are not so expert in the field of forensic science or taking the fingerprints or taking the footprint at the scene of crime so we also generally emphasize uh, that you should call the uh, forensic scientists or the expert to get their help in this field especially in the murder case or in the rape cases i i i feel i felt at that time that this is necessary for that so to find the clues or the you can say physical evidences or you you can say to link up the criminal from the uh, you you can say scene of crime or to link up the crime and criminal and to link up the victim and criminal the forensic scientist helps a lot in this field i remember one story i once i was reading the story of uh, birbal and akbar once two person went in the darbar of uh, raja akbar and asked that sir someone has stolen my this article or this thing but who has stolen i do not know then the 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 uh, Uh, the, the, the akbar akbar uh, asked some other persons also the the darbaris jo the usme they asked them that can you let us know who has committed this uh, this, this theft everybody told that i have not we, we are unable to find out the real uh, culprit ultimately people was called and he was asked that uh, whether any person you you can you, you and out or you can identify the real person okay yes sir i can go but i will take two days two days so he thought at night several times and on the next day he brought a blotting paper and kept that in a room and asked the four four suspects one by one that go inside you will find a paper you have to touch it three times that paper if you are culprit the paper will catch you hold psychological psychological pressure was given to them yadi tumne use chhua to teen baar to wo tumhe wahi pakad lega and you will be proved that you have committed the offense so three persons went inside and they touched three times but they were not caught and came out at last the four person entered into the room and he thought that 
ever. I will not touch that one. Nobody is seeing me. Because at that time, there, there, there were no uh, CCTV at that time. So, they, he, 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 after waiting for some time, he came without touching the paper. Without touching that paper. Okay. Four were standing in a line. He, so he, he asked them that, show your hands now. That, that the, everybody saw the hands of those uh, uh, persons and found that the three persons were having the marks of the blotting paper. But the fourth person was not having the blotting. And Birbal told that he is the real country. So at that time also, indirectly or indirectly, forensic science was being used at that time also. So I can say that forensic science plays a pivotal role in the legal system and helps in crime prevention, control, and detection. And especially I have seen that the UIDs, UIDs means the unidentified uh, dead bodies, UIDs cases, the forensic science is very, very helpful. Very, very helpful. And uh, especially in the murder cases or in the rape cases, the DNA is used to identify the person who is already unidentified. Now, what is forensic science? I will not go in that side. In one sentence, I can say where science meets the law is forensic science. It means if law and science are mixed and or depending, depending on each other, that will become the forensic science. Anyhow, so we can say that uh, digital evidences are very, very important in this, though the uh, ocular evidences are also important, but then uh, there may be any suspense or there may be any doubt there may be any other thing uh, on the ocular evidence that this physical evidence or forensic evidence is comes in the light. So, though physical evidence is corroborative evidence, which means identifying the suspects or to link the criminal and crime in it. So, these are very important. I can say that there may be uh, Several cases, when I was a DCP in New Delhi district, then in 1995, one case was occurred or happened. Uh, that is a famous case, which I can say Nena Sahani case or Tandoor case you have heard. Tandoor case. The lady was shot down with two, three shots and uh, was uh, put in Tandoor. Or burning. But half burned that body came out and it was identified through the DNA as well as fingerprint at the house. So due to the help of forensic science, we were able to identify the culprit, Nena Sahani, and as well as Mr. Sharma, who was the owner of that restaurant. In so many cases, in so many cases, and we, we, we find when uh, I was DCP in a west, 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 west district, in Nanglo area, in jungle, one dead body was found. And that was uh, about 25, 26 years lady. And it was brutally raped. And uh, you can say unnatural sex was also done. And uh, uh, I can say that it was so big, so big, so big, private part and it was very difficult to identify that lady because her face was also disfigured. So we made a very, very sincere effort to get identified that one. So through the DNA at that time, I can say firmly that it was the first case at that time DNA was just at that time it was started to be tested. So that case was also worked out due to DNA. Or, and the Nana Sahani case was also worked out due to DNA. So I can say 
that police cannot walk even a single step without the help of uh, uh, this uh, without the help of forensic scientists. But what is the ground reality? What is the ground reality of the cooperation or of the you can say coordination uh, between forensic forensic scientists as well as the uh, law enforcement agencies? They are having their own limitations. As I have observed, that forensic scientists are not having so much vehicles to attend the scene of crime. So generally, at that time, when I was in police, at that time, police used to send the vehicle to carry the uh, forensic scientists. scientists. And it used to take so a long time, a long time. And there was very, very, you can say, chances that the scene of crime can be disturbed by that time because of the, uh, you can say, media, because of the VVIPs, because of the local leaders, because of the senior police officers, it used to be disturbed. So it is very difficult. This, this may also be because of the uh, difficulty. Secondly, police is not so much trained in handling the physical evidences at the scene of crime. If they are trained, well trained uh, by the, you can say, scientists, sci scientists, so they, it can be a little bit easier to handle the scene of crime. Thirdly, the testing, the testing part is exclusively done by the uh, forensic scientists in the labs. And that is very, very important. It may be in every sleeper, in ballistic case, in chemistry case, in biological cases, or in, you can say, physics cases, or in accident cases, only the scientist can prove that this, this, this is linked, this linked up with this one, this linked up with this one. They, they, they can easily say that. So in my opinion, there may be some lacks or some, you can say, uh, shortcomings in the cooperation because both are having their own sanctity. Uh, uh, both the institutions are having their own sanctities. So, but when I was ACP crime branch in Delhi police, I was uh, made the in charge of narcotics, of narcotics. And it was new for, though it was not new for uh, uh, scientists, but it was new for me because it was introduced in 1985 only. And it was new that you have to find out the percentage of the, uh, you, you can say, narcotic drugs, percentage, in charas, per percentage of hashish, percentage of, you can say, uh, heroin or smack, etc., etc. So to solve this problem, I once visited the CFSF because we were attached with the CFSF uh, at that time. And Mr. Uh, perhaps VN Segal. VN Segal, yes, yes, yes. You are right. VN Segal used to be the director at that time. So I talked to him, sir, this is the problem. And uh, we can get the reward. Uh, out of this, uh, out of the recovery of these uh, drugs, so please give the percentage also. No, no, this is very, uh, this, this is not needed in the court, this is not needed here, this, 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 this. Man, sir, I have personally visited to, to you, and one IPS officer has come to you and requesting that it will give the weightage to the courts also. If there is only 10%, it will show that the police has mixed up some other material because it is the 10% only. But if it will be 30% uh, or 40% or 60%, it will give the weightage in the punishment also, because it is quietly pure. So the matter was resolved at that time, and he agreed that we will give the percentage. We will give the percentage. So, and after that, the court also said, told that the percentage is must. Later on, after three, four years, it, it, it made that the percentage of the, uh, you can say, drug is 
very very important it must be there it must be there okay anyhow so if we will meet each other there will not be any problem if i will be uh, you can say uh, in my ego or forensic scientist will be in their ego ego or every uh, other uh, advocates and prosecutors will be in their ego then the case cannot be you can say solved or the matter cannot be dissolved so there is a need of a great cooperation of each other with processing at least i can say that forensic scientist is not supposed to meet the advocates or the prosecutor you you can meet the prosecutor because he is from the side of state so but the defense counsel need not to meet with them if there is no cooperation with the defense counsel there will not be any effect on the case but if there is not proper co co cooperation with the prosecutor or with the police then it can affect the it can affect the case is also so there is a great need to improve the uh, you can say cooperation between police and forensic scientists i can say that if the uh, scientist has been called at the scene of crime then the work can be systematically done if the police is handling and our sub inspector or asi is not well trained in that field then it 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 may you can say hamper the case it may affect the case and it will not be uh, so powerful with the evidence as it may be with the cooperation of the uh, forensic scientists so <coughs> in uh, another case i remember that uh, the murder of uh, uh, some uh, vikas yadav uh, took uh, a boy uh, from delhi to up and he was murdered and burnt and you will surprise after burnt only this portion of the hand was remained and it was taken into custody and through dno it was identified that he is so person and the case was transferred to delhi when he was identified and uh, uh, in so many uh, times i have seen his mother who was uh, taking pervy of the case in new delhi court so uh, it was linked up that it is murdered by vikas so vikas yadav was apprehended and due to the help of the dna it was decided that he, it is this person and he has been murdered by this person and it was ultimately convicted and there was no riot in the supreme court also so i can firmly say that the cooperation between police and forensic scientist is must so that we can perform the police work or criminal justice works perfectly in a perfect manner thank you very much thank you dr bhushan uh, now i will invite dr ranjit singh uh, to proceed with this panel discussion and give his views about the forensic scientists thank you so much sir thank you goya sir and thank you bhushan sir bhushan sir highlighted a very relevant part that how the uh, police take a help of forensic scientists and he discussed the cases of either we say anana sahani or we say nitish katara border case so the different aspects of the forensic science is very very important sir has already highlighted the point that police officers require the training so here uh, as subhas anyal ma'am and abha ma'am we decided to give this proceeding to the ministry also so that something can be do we can give this to the home uh, ministry also so that uh, in the training of police officers because you know either is a training of constable or is a training of uh, uh, sub inspector or is training of ips officers few uh, module which is very very important for the crime scene investigation at this packaging of the evidences handling the physical evidences properly that should be given to the police officer even they are uh, coming as a uh, uh, 
coming as a constable also. So that one part I would like to highlight that it can be included, it, can, it must be included and must be given this training to the police officers during their, uh, during their recruitment, because once they will recruit and once they will learn from the beginning, uh, that will be a very, very, very important. Sadly, I have seen, the, I have also given the training to many police officers, but nowadays, at least uh, like uh, in the last uh, few weeks, I was uh, giving the training to the many DYSP. So they are the young officers, but I have seen, uh, sadly, I have seen uh, in the past that uh, whenever the part of training is concerned for the forensic science, the senior officers of that particular district, they, they assign the police officers, those who are, uh, of the old days, or those who are of the having the retirement of five year or ten year. So you know, and sometimes I heard uh, I uh, cannot name the any police officer, but sometimes I heard from the very senior officials we sent uh, to training to those who are not use uh, those who are not for the very much useful for the criminal investigation. So that that things we need to be clarified that whenever we send the police officer, they are the asset. Police officer is asset for our country, and. Uh, uh, it should be those who are newly recruited police officers, they should be sent for the higher trainings, either it's go for the NICFS or they are going to the any any institutions, either they are going for the CAPT or they are going for the any uh, training institutions. So the youngest police officers, once they will learn from the early days, they can they can train their new coming or their future officers also. So it's a train the trainer policy will go in a very good way. So it's very important that police should be trained. And I'm sure that police officer cannot be perfect as the forensic scientist uh, going to be after uh, multiple rigorous trainings and uh, expending their years and years into the, you know, uh, into the laboratory at the crime scene because police officers have several responsibility. Being a son of police officer, I know the responsibility of a police officers. How, uh, how difficult for a police to manage not only the uh, election duties, not only the VIP duty, not only the maintaining law and order. And ultimately, we are expecting from them to they become the scientists of forensic, uh, of uh, collecting the evidence. And it's, it is very difficult. Also, the main lacuna nowadays coming as we are, in, as the uh, crime is moving more towards the digital era. So the many, many police officers, those who are, uh, do, they, they doesn't know about the at least terminologies, as is several terminologies of the digital era, because fraud is going at the Bitcoin, they are going in the cryptocurrencies. It is not limited to the fraud related to some something which is uh, uh, is uh, or uh, happen with the device or happen on the website. There are the cloud frauds uh, where we have the lots of issue related to jurisdiction, and for that uh, many government agencies they are making the cyber uh, policies, cyber security policies, and so that we can train. And uh, recently we have uh, uh, conducted one uh, uh, one program for the training of police officer on the cyber part. And there are the 1600 police station of Uttar Pradesh. They, uh, they have joined that program and uh, under the leadership of Professor Triveni Singh. Sir. So it's very important that uh, uh, higher officials should take initiative. They involve the stakeholders and uh, being a forensic scientist, I always love to give the trainings to the police officers. And as I, I have the connection with the police officer, I uh, born in the police station, I brought up in the police station. So I know the policing part very closely. So uh, it's very, very important to give the training to the police officer. Uh, it's very easy to uh, blame someone that they are not doing good, but what we have done something good for them, either we have trained them properly or not. As far as the forensic scientist is concerned, in India, we are lacking a lot with the forensic scientists. Several times our Supreme Court have given, uh, uh, given you know, notices to the states that why you are not filling the vacancies. At least the vacancies, you do not create the vacancy, at least you fulfill the vacancies. So more than 50% vacancies are already available with the state's police, the state's laboratory. And a uh, few things is very, very important. One is who can be the forensic expert if they are going to do the job in the forensic science laboratory. So there should be a one uniform rules and regulations. There is always fight between the pure sciences and the forensic science people that who can be the forensic scientist in the forensic science laboratory. So through this platform, we'll try also to uh, give some suggestion or give some guidelines to the state uh, body, home ministries, so that they can form the uniform rules for the 
recruitment of the new forensic officers because the demand is demand is required and uh, we are lacking with the infrastructure we are lacking with our officers although many states like uttar pradesh they have formed the big big laboratories uh, at the several places but there is no officer there is no sufficient officer to solve the cases pendency is very high and in several states uh, they are just opening the cases at 2012 2014 so you can imagine how we can give the justice so again this justice delay justice denied is something like and in the cases where they have the pressure like the uh, cases of the fox and others we are doing the analysis in the overnight and in doing any analysis in the overnight there is a possibility of the error so again i will quote the uh, justice hurried is just it buried so it's very important to make the coordination between why we are doing the things in a hurry why we are doing the things in after 10 year it's just because of the lack of manpower again uh, it's very important to have the forensic officer at every districts as uh, yeah, in uh, in several states they have the mobile forensic units and many 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 uh, districts of the states they have the police officers over there as a forensic officers and i always receive the call from them and they are sometimes they are very clueless whenever they get some evidence from the scene of crime they ask uh, how to seal that evidence and uh, the reason behind that uh, trained officer is not at the scene at, is not at the scene and they call the police officer i i think bhushan sir will agree with me that they call the uh, forensic scientist when they see that case is going to be sensitive not in every cases every case is not like the aruc in nsani and the nitish katara but you see the modus operandi is very very common in such cases like there is a if, if there is a shot of the nsani if there is a uh, like if there is any case of uh, of aruc there are several cases like aruc in nsani and nitish katara going on a day and day but these are not the not of the cases of the media importance or we haven't heard about such cases so that's why we are ignoring such part so it's very important the first how this can be you know how this can uh, be regularized how this can be become a uniform so i uh, just want to give my uh, opinion or my thinking i may be wrong so because uh, in this panel or in this even the uh, all the um, fraternity and the speakers i am the youngest one so my opinion if if i am wrong please correct me so uh, first of things we require to coordination between the forensic science agencies forensic science laboratories directorate of forensic science services and the police agency for the common platform how this can be happen this is very very required requ this is very very important to form one council like if any changes in the medical profession is required there is a medical council of india if there is any changes required in the dental Uh, education there is a dental council of india similarly for bar council of india for the judicial processes for appointment by even the judicial officer there is a collegium it's not like some some is something like uh, a, a home ministry who is making the rule uh, regulation and there is no person who is involved with the forensic science so the forensic council of india is very very important steps which government can take and by forming the forensic council of india we can uh, uh, we can make a uniform rules and regulation for every state because you see in several state if i name the state like kerala they have a lots of fingerprint expert while you see the uh, in delhi there are very few in uttar pradesh there are very few uh, there are very few uh, fingerprint expert and in several state they are not the fingerprint expert they are the sub inspector who get the training in the fingerprinting they joined as a sub inspector they did the duty in several other uh, departments and after their interest they want to come into the fingerprint division so there is no they can see for fingerprint expert uh, as a fingerprint expert but they are coming as a sub inspector in several state but to the forensic council of india it's very important to form the uniform rules and regulation if we have the uniform rules and regulation for that we can add them a proper training and certifications as we see the expert council united kingdom we see the canadian uh, expert council they have the particular certification system and after having the certification system it should be continue after 2 year 3 year 5 year so that whenever the new techniques is coming it should be uh, it, it, such knowledge should be uh, given to the officers one thing is also i have seen in several laboratory that uh, the transfer was happened uh, here to this department to this department i have seen few officers those who are not the expert of the cyber forensics but they are the deputy director or the joint director of the particular division they do they do not have the clue about what are the kind of uh, 
uh, development is going in the particular field. So that training will be very, very important to make them equated with the, uh, make them, uh, you know, uh, knowledgeable about the few things. So that uh, that certification, if some expert is not qualifying that expert, uh, that examination, he should be uh, he should be given the another chance, like something like that. Uh, like in um, in many uh, corporate also, we have seen that uh, there are uh, training policies is going on. Even some uh, in also in medical professions, I have seen Goria sir and Mukesh sir will agree with me. They are in the panel that there are lots of uh, CME is going on. So what is the purpose of CME or what is the purpose of education uh, or the training certification that they can learn the new technique, they can uh, equip with the new technique, they can get grasp the new knowledge. Once we will have this certification program, then the forensic scientist, you know, sometimes we always had that forensic report is not acceptable by the code, narco analysis is not acceptable by the code, this report is not acceptable by the code. We never discuss about how many reports were acceptable. Because, you know, if there is 10,000 report, if 10 is not acceptable, we talk about the 10 reports. We do not talk about the 9,990 reports. So it's just because we, we require a certification program for such officials so that they can look good in the court and court should have the reliability because I, I had a long discussion with Justice Balakrishnan and he said that uh, uh, I have given this judgment that narco analysis is not acceptable. The reason behind that your scientific community is not supported me. Scientific com community is not fully confident on such techniques. So that happened in one or two cases, but you see thousands of cases has been given as such evidence as a corroborative. So it's very, very important that we all together can see, uh, particularly the, there should be a program for the police officers. I always request the different IPS officers, those who are my friends, uh, whenever I visit that particular district for my evidence, I took one extra day that I want to give you a tra uh, training to your officers. And they very happily they invite and their officers come. But I, have, I haven't seen such thing enthusiasm in the investigating officers. The reason behind that, when you call that first step, you have to go to the side scene of crime to seal the scene of crime. They ask, sir, we tape to milta hi nahi hai. So th there, are, there are lots of ignorance. When we say that you have to seal the evidence properly, these are the like for an example, if you received the or if you recovered the gun from the scene of crime, you should call the expert so that he can develop the fingerprint at the scene of crime, then seal that gun and send to the forensic uh, ballistic division. Until unless you do not have the two evidence, your case is uh, going to be weak. And if you have the two evidence by having the expertise, that will be very very important. So that is a one ignorance part I have seen. I cannot blame our police also for this ignorance part because we have not made their mind about that. So if if we say that it is very very important and if we uh, uh, if we make their mind that uh, you have to collect each and every uh, every evidence from the day one, then definitely the conviction rate, which is now uh, if there is a FIR is ninety two point uh, charge sheet is ninety two point three percent in particular box of cases and conviction in 27.3%, this huge gap we can easily fill. This huge gap is uh, can be easily filled. And, you know, as our uh, system we have, we cannot convict someone beyond the reasonable doubt. So there, they, there is a prosecution, where the question comes from the prosecution and the lawyers. So the lawyers is also equally important and they are equally required to be taught the forensic science in their evidence, at least in their evidence act paper. Uh, whenever they are pursuing their law. I have seen the several national law uh, university because I did my uh, master's from national law university, Jodhpur. So there are paper of forensic science and they have even the BSc forensic science plus LLB. In BSc, they are teaching the forensic science. So, so it's very important to make them understand because nowadays you can see the many cyber lawyers, but you will not find a lawyer who is equated with the forensic medicine. They are just opening the book of Modi or they are uh, taking some help of the other senior experts. They are not expertise. They are not reading that content. They are not uh, They are not love to read because they know the laws. They know the law very well. But during the cross-examination, if they are not doing the properly, if they are not taking the things properly, there is a possibility some important facts they, they, they cannot present into the court of law. And you have seen that uh, either we talk about the Mesh Kumar or the Andhra Pradesh, the state of Andhra Pradesh, the illegally obtained uh, that bank statement was admissible by the court of law. It's just because we are not aware. Uh, if we talk about the 
uh, in the digital evidence, if you talk about uh, Anwar Basir or we now talk about uh, Arjun Patidar, you talk about any any cases, any recent cases where the Supreme Court given uh, their verdict or their and see many many several times when we discuss about the lawyers, I used to give the training for the law colleges also and the lawyers uh, uh, when they call the group of lawyers they call uh, for lecture. So they said that whatever the case study you are discussing, they all have been convicted. So it's true that they all have been convicted, but Supreme Court form their guidelines after giving the conviction even because it, the conviction is not only based on the evidence and uh, it is based on the trial court from where you have started this uh, conversation from where you have shown the importance of evidence. If there is a conviction in any case, there is a there, there is important fact and on that base, they have formed either we consider about the survey versus the state of Karnataka. If we uh, talking about any uh, for for guide setting the guidelines for the bails or for human rights. So there are there are different aspects where the Supreme Court give the opinion and Supreme Court several times they given notices to the states. They given fine to the state. Even if I correctly remember in 2019, they uh, given fine to 50,000 rupees on the eight states so that uh, they can fulfill the vacancies. And uh, during the uh, during the last, I think 2021, one student of the law uh, they put the PIL that they know to, uh, they they wants the every police station must have the forensic expert. It can be it can be a sub inspector. You make a special recruitment. You recruit them through the sub inspector post. Give them training proper, but they should be they should be specialized for doing the forensic work only. They should not be specialized. They should not be deployed in any other work. Whenever some, because you know, on every day have the, they have the several crime scene. Not only the crime scene, there are the fraud related complaints. So although it, that is a very good thing that uh, government is maintaining the cyber police stations at the different aspects, they are uh, maintaining the lots of complaints through the cybercrime.gov.in. They have issued the guidelines. So things are improving day by day. But here, uh, I would like to conclude my uh, my thought with that. Once we have somebody who is responsible, because where we are existing right now, we are not existing either with the part of the police or with the part of the uh, home ministry or with the, we are the part of the judicial system, where we are existing. For that, we require some body, some, uh, some council who can give the guidance, who can give the path to us being a forensic. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for giving the opportunity. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ranjit Singh, uh, for telling in a very nice way the situation about the forensic science and the forensic science labs and uh, what are the difficulties being faced and uh, what are the difficulties you face while you give the training and why, in spite of all this, the things are not moving ahead. And uh, similarly, Dr. Bushan has already told that uh, uh, what is the version of the police. And uh, there is, he emphasized that there is a need of collaboration between forensic science and the police officials. So now I will go ahead of uh, these points, uh, what Dr. Bushan and Dr. Ranjit Singh has said in a very nice manner. And especially Dr. Ranjit Singh told about the creation of the uh, some central organization which controls the standards of the uh, training program. So this is very important. So as far as the training part of the police official is concerned, it cannot be denied, but that they have to be given training. But simultaneously, uh, we need to understand that the police officials are coming from the diverse backgrounds. Some are not from the science. Many of them are from the arts. And when we want to tell them the science, probably they are at the crossroads. Uh, they get something, they don't get something. So whenever I try to organize the training program for the police officials uh, during my career, and uh, I had seen that I, I say, uh, OK, so I'm interested uh, for providing training. They say, OK, or they, they send a letter to the uh, police lines that, that all those police officials who are not doing any uh, good duty, let them go there. So because they are the persons who are not at all interested in the police lines, some majority of them may be the, such persons because they have been sent there because they are not interested in their duties. Or, 
due to some other reasons, uh, probably the police officials will know, and uh, they have come. Uh, we have tried to train them. They get something. It is not that they don't get something, but ultimately, after going there, whether they will be involved in the crime scene investigation. So very rarely. So once I try to uh, train the police officials for the uh, rape cases, that uh, how they have to deal with the rape cases. They sent me twenty. I I told them that please send me only those police officials uh, who understand English. I I told them that who are interested, let them come. I said that who will be useful after this training, please send them. So about 15 police officials I had asked for, but of course there were 25. So I was very happy. But uh, when I provided the training for the two days, I said, how many of you have uh, ever dealt with? Or are you go ever going to deal with the case? No, they, they say these are now the female police officials who will be dealing with our uh, rape cases. So after the two days of training, and then I again wrote a letter to the um, highest police official that uh, next time when you send, please send the, those police officials who are going to deal with such cases. Then, then it is only the utility. Of course, they learn the new things. Uh, they enjoy it, and they are away for two days from their routine duties. But uh, that does not matter. The matter is what usefulness will be to the police officials whom we are going to train. So whenever we are going to provide the training, please, uh, I think this is just one of my suggestions from the experience that uh, give that training to the person who is going to deal with that case in future. So uh, th this is just one of the aspects. And uh, when we have given the training, they have taken the training, of course, that is going to be useful. I just remember the case that I was going. I was giving the training uh, on on the bite marks. So I gave the training for uh, it was a a week training. So they were trained in that, and uh, right the very next day after the training was given, a, a, a case was brought of the bite marks. Sir, uh, this is a case. How we should deal? I said I told you everything about this, but uh, you see we are in the medical colleges. And they, he brought the case, and uh, um, probably we are theoretically so much. We learned so many things, but practically sometimes uh, it is not. We are doing the research work. We are uh, in the medical colleges. We are doing mostly the research work. We are going for that. So he brought a case. So, so again, I uh, try to involve the one dentist in that case from the government dental college. I sent a call, but they said no. We are busy. We cannot come. Ultimately, I invited one of the uh, my private dental friend who was uh, interested in forensic odontology. So in that case, that was helped, and we could exclude many cases and, and could not exclude one case. So which was further investigated, and uh, he said, yes, she did this bite mark. So probably uh, there is a, always a benefit of the training for the police officials, and when it is given in the right sense, they, they are going to use it. And the cases are solved uh, in, in such circumstances. It is not only the police officials. Uh, it is even the, uh, if the police officials bring uh, to the medical college, to the doctor, if the doctors are not trained to deal with that type of the evidence, then what should be done? They also need training for that. And I have seen that uh, in all these scenarios, I have uh, seen in uh, while traveling and while lecturing and while participating in the various workshops around the world, I have seen that the forensic nurses, they are the very good in collecting the biological evidence. When it is a murder investigation, whether it is a rape investigation, whether it is any and it is concerned with the uh, poisoning case, or it is concerned with some injury case, probably they are the very good person who, uh, who are good at taking the biological evidences. Because in most of the situations, uh, whenever such a case is there, uh, they will bring it to the emergency or something. So if the person is trained there uh, in the emergency, you know different types of the cases coming. 
and the doctors busy with uh, saving the lives of the person. And sometimes uh, in, in those situation, the collection of the evidence get jeopardized. So this collection of evidence when gets jeopardized in such a way, we must think that in the field, in the hospital, in the dispensary, when the cases are come, how we can collect the evidence in the best manner. So one, one thing is we train the police officials, of course, that is the very important and that always should be done and that should be done routinely. And uh, all those persons who are going to investigate the cases, they should always be trained. At least for a week, at least for uh, two weeks, so that they have a rough idea at least that uh, if such a situation comes, then how they are going to deal with th those cases. So when they are trained, then when they are going to the hospitals, then their doctors need to be trained uh, for that. And because doctors are gynecologists, they are doing the rape cases now. Uh, they are very busy with the operations, cesareans, uh, deliveries, and so many diseases. So examination of the victims come at the last part to that. So the forensic nurses, which is a big thing in the world now that has come to India. And with the forensic nursing now, that is becoming a part of the under, undergraduate course all around the world. That is the first thing happening in India. And I am proud that this is happening first in India. And when they will come out, the problem of the hospital is going to be solved. And if these forensic nurses, along with the forensic scientists, they go to the crime scene investigation, then again, there will be double added benefit in, in, in that. Because uh, forensic scientist, uh, I will just like to say, uh, you see, they are trained in, in most of the cases, they are trained in one branch. Either they are fingerprint experts, or they are DNA experts, or they are in some, uh, any other branch of the uh, expert. Uh, what do you think, uh, uh, Dr. Ranjit? So usually they are expert on, uh, usually in one field. I, I, so thank you, Ranjit. So you're adding that, uh, yes, they are. But when the forensic nurses will be there in collaboration with the forensic scientists at the crime scene investigation, the collection of the evidence is going to be much, much better. They know what is the value of that uh, particular uh, evidence and how that is collected. So now we are finished with that, what the police officials want, what the forensic scientists want. And the one thing which all of them want is the good collection of the evidence, because that is the basis upon which every case is going to be built up. So courts rely on the, you see the oral evidence, but he's saying he, he didn't murder in front of me like that. So uh, all those evidences are very good. But sometimes such, such type of the evidence may not be there. Then in those circumstances, this is the evidence of the forensic scientist, which will corroborate the theory of the investigating officer. And that will be proved in the court. And then that is going to be useful ultimately. Because whatsoever we do, whether the police officials, whether the forensic scientists, whether the forensic pathologists, but what they do, the ultimate aim is that person who is innocent, that should not be punished. And the person who is a criminal, he must be punished because if that is left behind, he will be free to do so many other crimes. It is very, very important. And for that, as a scientific community, we need to think that where we are lacking in all these areas. The basic thing which I think is, there are good forensic scientists, there are good police officials, there are good forensic pathologists, but when they give the opinion, whether, that opinion is useful to those who want to 
यूटिलाइज दिस ओपिनियन फ्रेंसिक साइंटिस्ट फ्रेंसिक पैथोलॉजिस्ट दे आर यूजिंग सो मेनी टेक्निकल टर्म्स इफ यू गो फ्रॉम पंजाब टू डेली प्रॉब्ली द पैटर्न ऑफ द ओपिनियन विच इज बींग गिवन दैट विल बी डिफरेंट फॉर्मेट्स विल बी डिफरेंट वाई कैन नॉट बी देर ए सिंगल फॉर्मेट फॉर ऑल दीज ओपिनियंस थ्रू आउट द इंडिया वेन वी टाक अबाउट वन नेशन वन थिंग सो वाई इट कैन नॉट बी इन द केस ऑफ फ्रेंसिक साइंसिस टू द पर्सन हु इज गिविंग द ओपिनियन ही शुड गिव इट द सेम फॉर्मेट and when this opinion is given so then courts will agree to it if this is a good opinion how opinions cannot be good the biggest thing is fraud when the specialist gets involved in the frauds due to one reason or the other due to pressure from the higher ups due to other reasons corruption can be one of them we cannot deny it because we daily see in our lives that wherever you go money is a big factor so we have to make it reliable the opinions have to be reliable how the opinions will be reliable if we have the in the labs we have the trained persons right persons in sufficient number of persons and they are not overloaded with the work they are not tired or burnt from the work overload only then it is possible then there should be standard operating procedures which should be verified by an organization there should be facilities there so when the everybody will be using the same same standing operating procedure for the same machine only then it is good why the standard sop should be different from state to state or why and many time there is no sops in many labs they just because it was being done by the senior it was done being done previously so we are going uh, doing this so there should be standard operating procedures and then it will become the reliable so now first it when the forensic science started uh, probably it told about the akbar birbal but uh, usually there they we say they were not properly recorded the, the myths are there and the forensic science started developing in the 19th century and it has developed a lot since uh, since those times and some of these branches had developed and then have degraded now they are they are considered a good evidence the n is considered a good evidence because it has got a higher reliability what about the hair what about the footprint what about the bite marks now probably they are not considered very good uh, nowadays in the court of law and if the once uh, dr ranjit was talking that 10 opinions are not good we are talking of them they will be talked why they will be talked because when they go to the court they lose the trust when such reports go they lose they lose the reliability because we are not performing in such a manner that everything can be validated every procedure can be validated till every procedure can be validated the reports of the forensic science labs will be in a question mark many people have knowledge we provide we give the degrees we provide the knowledge we assess them for the knowledge and yes some some have got very good knowledge some have got less some got 90% some get 50% but still when they come to the field all of them are the forensic scientist but the basic thing is not knowledge it is the understanding 
what they understand about all these things. The report which you give whether you understand the report which you are giving, whether that is understood by the police who is going to use it, whether that report which you give that is understood by the advocates or prosecutors, whether that report is understood by the judge who is ultimately going to give the judgment. We, you go, we, are, we are using so many technical terms. Judge may be uh, just MLLB. He has studied Hindi or Punjabi or literature or English or something. And then he has done LLB. So how about, how about does he know about the science? But he is supposed to understand everything and give the judgment. So we should give the reports in a such a manner, in a common language that everybody understands this. Forensic scientists, I have seen that what report they give in many circumstances that can be understood by another forensic scientist or maybe by the forensic pathologist. That is not understood by the others. So when it is going to be practically applicable, no, no use at all. And sometimes, of course, there are uh, mistakes uh, are there. So these mistakes are not always due to fraud. This, these can be innocent mistakes also. Just mixing all the samples. They don't want, there is a little knowledge. There are little skill. So all, all these parts are uh, playing a part in this. So all these reports must be reliable can be validated, only then these can be useful. So this is this all involves communication. So communication is needed to be developed by forensic pathologist, forensic scientist, so that the opinion which they give that is handy for the investigating officers who may be from a, even from a art background, he can understand that and he can use that. It is not that once we send the report, he makes 10 rounds to understand that report. And we should uh, be ready that uh, we provide such reports which are good and ultimately uh, sometimes because uh, the police officials the prosecutors, the defense, defense lawyers, the judges, they are seeing too many dramas and movies on forensic science. And there are different views. Some say it is, these are very good, provide knowledge. But then their level of expectation becomes such that forensic science can solve all the issues. Remember, forensic science is a science. We are men of science. We can tell, yes, what can be done, what cannot be done. And when we give the report, person should know, yes, how much it is reliable. Even the uh, very good, the DNA, so the reliability in that case, what is that? Latest report anybody has, no. What is the reliability of those reports? In one of the research paper, I had uh, read that uh, it is 83. Maybe it is uh, varying uh, with the different studies. And similarly for bite marks, still lower. Similarly for hairs, lower. just fingerprints, that's going good. Analytical, yes, that is going good. So there are various tools which the forensic science persons are using. This, these are the pure branches of the chemistry, physics and all that. There are comparisons like fingerprints. There is, of course, identification part uh, is a very important part in the mass disasters. So we should need to know what is good how it is to be presented. In many parts of the world, there, are, there is a jury system. In India, it is not there, but in many parts of the world, there is a jury system 
and who are the members of the jury the common man common man when they think about forensic science, they say, no, they can solve anything because they have seen that so many crime scene investigation, dramas and movies. They think that they can solve every, everything, but they have their own experience of life. And when the forensic science reports uh, does not give that report, then they will go without these reports. They will give a decision without these reports. When they are not able to understand, you can leave it aside. So we have the common sense and we will do that. So one thing is very important that when we give the reports, that should be accurate, that should be understandable, that should be useful in that particular case, because all the cases are different. And we give a uniform report in all the cases. So you see, what are the questions? What are the points of query which we need to solve? And we should go according to that. And uh, when we go, we'll go according to that, we will be able to help the investigating officer. We will be able to help the judiciary to reach at the uh, right conclusions. So I think if we are going to talk about this, we can go on talking and talking. And I uh, probably, we started earlier, but our scheduled time, 5.15, when we were supposed to finish, uh, probably we are, we are reaching that time. So I would like to uh, conclude that police officials needs to be trained. Forensic scientists need to be trained and they should be put on duty where their expertise lies. Let the police officials who are investigating, if they are investigating cybercrime, let them be trained for cybercrime. If they are investigating murder, let them be trained for murder. And in many cases, they are investigating everything usually in most of the circumstances. There are a few special cells, but those of the special cells must be, must be trained in that. If they are doing with a cybercrime, must be, if there are somebody de dealing with the rape cases only, uh, they must be trained if somebody is dealing with the geriatric abuse, somebody is dealing with child abuse, somebody is uh, dealing with the domestic violence, probably they should, they need to be trained about that. Not only this, they also need to be trained about certain th laws thing, uh, laws also that, what are the provisions in those laws which are important in their cases. So all, all this uh, needs to be uh, trained in that subject, we should have knowledge. We should have skill. And when we have knowledge and skill, probably the reports will be good. And these reports needs to be communicated in such a language that they become that become useful. There are less rounds of the police official to the forensic pathologist or forensic scientist to understand that report. And when this will be done, probably this will be when. This will be, and if police officials understand all this, they will be able to make understand the prosecutors. Prosecutors will understand, and when they will put the case before the judge in a simple way, in a simple language, they will also understand the value of the, the scientific evidence, and they will be able to give the right judgment. They will not be able to ignore this fact ignore these reports of the forensic science. So when all this is done, probably we can expect that we will get good results with the investigation, whether that is in the crime scene, whether that is in the forensic science lab, whether that is with the hospitals, uh, when post-mortem examination and other, other cases are being done. If we give good report, we expect good results in the from the judiciary. Uh, we should not try to blame because now uh, there are so many people involved in the crime scene investigation. There is not even a single person. And forensic nurses uh, in the, wherever the biological evidence is there. So they can be very, very useful. They should be involved in investigation. 
they will produce good results. If their posts are not there, like the forensic scientist uh, sub inspector can be there. So they are the graduates, are the post graduates. They can also be uh, uh, there as a sub inspector or a assistant sub inspector, or whatsoever uh, the government can see and visualize that they will be good. So they, they can be given those things. And uh, probably everything will go ahead. Uh, we, India is progressing very well. And in future, I think India will uh, do great things as far as the investigation is concerned, but whether that is by police official and that is helped by the forensic scientist, everybody, everybody will do in a good manner. Uh, thank you, my panelists, Dr. Bhushan and Dr. Ranjit Singh. And I think it is 5.15 and uh, I am uh, finishing this so that I don't want to extend your uh, final program. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for covering. Dr. Ranjit, this. can I add one very important point uh, based on your input and Gorea sir input, which you people said? Yes. If I'm allowed, I can speak for a yes, second. Yes, ma'am. Uh, sir, I think what you said about education and training in university system, when the law department is there, forensic department is there and psychology department, every department is there. So when we were investigating a lot of, uh, I think, inquiry of these students, we came across a uh, course and, uh, which was uh, uh, which we wanted to start in the university, but somehow it did not start. I think Dr. Sandhya, we must be knowing that course. It was certificate program in behavioral science techniques and technology, where all disciplines uh, played very important roles, like cyber, forensic, law, engineering, today machine learning, and uh, artificial, intelligence and psychology. So all of the department, they formulated a module to deliver this program. And this is only uh, one center which is there in the world, which I'm forgetting right, I'll just share. They, they do this for investigating agency. So very different program, very holistic program, which you were saying that all round of information, one judge or one lawyer or one forensic expert cannot have. But if we have that educational modules, and uh, universities have still not taken this, you know, and we were discussing, but still it was in the fight and people somehow were not able to come to uh, uh, some common understanding that how this can be delivered. Again, getting faculty and everything was a difficult thing for us, you know, and now when I'm hearing you, I'm reminded of that course that I think Ranjit Singh, we can start that course because this is one institute in the world which is doing this course, is only one institute. And what Goreya sir and Bhushanji and you people are saying, it's an educational and training, and this will add a lot of value in investigation. This is what I understand. So I wanted to share this thought of mine, which long back we had done, but still it has to uh, see the light of the day. So maybe I think. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank Dr. You. Abba Singh. And uh, probably you will be delighted to know that uh, the National Forensic Science University uh, has started with the uh, graduate as well as the postgraduate, postgraduate programs uh, in the forensic nursing science where this behavioral sciences has also one module and 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 they will be taught and uh, they are also teaching the forensic uh, scientists this to the behavioral sciences so they have a college of the behavioral sciences so they are probably doing good and now they are opening uh, their uh, units in the different parts of the country and uh, i think the four different universities are coming of the forensic science concerned with the national forensic science university and probably what you are saying that is being implemented now thank onwards. you sir. thank you very much please dr bushan I want to add uh, two points only that you have told that uh, Gujarat University is the national university. Its campus is in Delhi also. And uh, where I was working, NICFS, as a professor, nowadays it has been converted into university. And it is the New Delhi campus of Gujarat Forensic Science University, number one. Number two, I want to add one thing. We have not covered that one. We all know the police is the state subject. And there is a lot of interference of the state governments in that field. I experienced this fact when I was posted in BPRND, Bureau of Police Research and Development. There I was handling the modernization as well as the uh, this uh, national community policing project. I was handling that one. So 
we were offering them the training we were offering them the the, the money we were offering them everything but state were not accepting that one i surprised i surprised neither the state is doing that work no 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 they are accepting the centers assistance so this is also one of the great hindrances in it because the state uh, uh, forensic scientists lab are under the state though there are few labs uh, very very few labs are there those are being governed by the central government and formerly these were in bprd nowadays these are free so i want to say this thing that the and you will surprise one thing i want to add one thing supreme court even uh, gave the very good judgment in the pil of uh, at is uh, for uh, ex dgp up and bsf prakash singh and they gave clear evidences but you will surprise one thing even today after 10 years some states have not adopted that things though they have been warned by the supreme court also so this is also a uh, very great hindrance in uh, this field so state should also be ready the state government should also be ready and they should also give some uh, you can say attention to the forensic scientist labs as well as the police also and there will there must be very 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 or rather should not be the you can say effect of the political leaders on the investigation which is very much seen in the states sorry to say like that thank you yes sir i would like to uh, i would like to come in uh, dr bhushan will bear with me that in an isfs that he mentioned i was there for quite some time and we were organizing in your know, training programs integrated training program for the cutting edge level police officers because they are the ones who definitely go to the crime scene not the dgp and the your ssp and all the who goes the inspector or the ac so you know integrated course with forensic science inputs of forensic science with inputs of psychology with inputs of criminology and of course police science it's given for years to get the given but what mr goria said you know i was not visible but i was hearing him silently that there is something very big gap between what is real and what we are teaching we have to accept that dr bishan that in spite of the fact that we are training people for years and years together even the senior police officer who is to come for refresher training for relearning after several years when they go back they say ma'am we have to adjust to the situation there as mr gurya said the political will that is not there that is lacking the judiciary no matter how much we have tried to coordinate them on the platform of nicfs with the police once they are back in their courts there comes the the image the attitude and things fall apart so how to build up how to make it more practical how to make it come that we must think of and as for the state not giving fund or the political will is not there bprnd is giving money these are there these will go on but the attitudinal change is required things have to become more practical because after all the delivery the service delivery has to be proactive has to be society friendly has to be victim friendly i think you will agree with me so you go on giving training everywhere go on training like i tell you i'll share with you that when i used to talk to senior police officers at the rank of ssp and dsp and others dcb i said what type of communication you have now please listen with your junior police officer you know small example mr gori and david because they are ones who are very much close to the society they are very much close to the community they know who's coming and who's going this is practice in the in england but in india these people the level of constable as a inspector they are simply asked or they are trained to say yes sir i do not know sir they cannot say sir we have seen something suspicious so something is going wrong they don't say they cannot say they are trained not to say 
So I had been talking to senior police officers, how many times you organize meeting and sit with your juniors, how many times you tell them, I we beg to differ, try to change your communication skill. That mindset has to change. And mindset, not only for the police, mindset has to change with the forensic scientists and the judiciary. Then only we can build up a formidable system as I'm talking and trying. I think you have to agree with me. This is my 40 years experience I'm sharing, Dr. Bhushan. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shubra Sanyal. And uh, yes, Mr. Dr. Gore, Dr. you had uh, hit on the peg that reality hona chahiye, language uh, conversant hona and, chahiye. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, this is very true. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Bhushan, uh, for your uh, final comments. And uh, I think uh, there is, we should read, increase the awareness among the state officials and the state officers for the forensic science. Probably when they are not aware, they don't accept that, uh, even uh, sometimes ignore the Supreme Court uh, directions that take a very long time to implement those directions. I think they, they will not say no to the Supreme Court direction, but they will take such a long time to Im implement those that uh, that almost becomes useless uh, by, by that time. So even yeah. I will like, uh, finally, with the final comment, I will like to say that we have talked about police officials, forensic pathologists, forensic scientists, uh, defense officials, and defense counsels, uh, prosecutors. But I will like to say even the judges needs to be trained. I, I just, uh, yeah. uh, final comment, I will say that once I had gone for the evidence and uh, something was being talked about, they said, there, there is a no, I said, there is a no difference between hanging and strangulation. Why are you complicating the things? When I try to explain them, the, the difference, they say, why are you trying to just uh, take us to wayside? This is one and the same thing. So at that, that time, what you can say when the, person who is chairing the court he is saying things than what you can speak at that time. So everybody needs to be yeah. trained. Even the judiciary needs to be uh, trained in this because they are coming from sometimes uh, not from the scientific background. Most of them are coming from the arts background and they needs to be trained for that also. And with these comments, I would like to uh, thank uh, Dr. Bhushan, Dr. Ranji Singh, my co-panelist uh, and uh, Abba Singh and Dr. Shubra Sanyal and all those who are listening um, because I am not seeing on, on the screen. So I could have thanked them individually, but I thank all the participants who are here, all the delegates, all the speakers, everybody involved in this and especially Dr. Aarti Vashne. So she's, uh, you see, very good in, in coordinating everything. I, yeah. I, I just landed from um, uh, some different city and uh, she just talked that the panel is being, uh, uh, meeting is being called. You just come on the <laughs> dais. So I was, I was, I was to come half an hour later on on the screen, but uh, she is very efficient and she makes everything go very smooth. Thank you, Dr. Arti Vashniar, sir, to, to you. And uh, I thank everybody, especially Dr. Ranji Singh, uh, again, that uh, he's such a nice boy. He's doing such a wonderful things for the scientific community for the police officials and for the other persons. I am very proud of him and I wish him all the success for his future endeavors too. Thank you everybody.